let's say that you went to a job interview and you beat all these people and you got the job and then they come back to determine your raise. Yeah. You know, like, <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. Hey everyone, it's Mirror Mangle. And Chloe Curiosity. And welcome to another Mangled Morning. Ooh. Woo. <laughs> Chloe, how are you? I'm great, how are you? Good, you look like you're ready to build a sandcastle. I am. Uh, good thing I'm not a vampire though. I'm over here <laughs> attempting to serve you Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I'm obsessed. So funny that we're, you know, uh, that it was a TV show. It's not funny that it was a TV show. What am I trying to say? <laughs> you know, Buffy is a, a very popular TV show where there's different times where I think people could say that the show like jumped the shark. Uh -huh. Which, do you know what that phrase means? Speaking of beach. Like, <laughs> do you know what? Have you ever heard that phrase? Like, you know jump ahead from? or something. So, jump the shark was a phrase meaning it basically means like the TV did something, typically a stunt, that ruined the show forever. Oh, <laughs> right. Um, and it actually comes from it's a it's an actual like uh, episode of Happy Days where the Fonzie literally jumps over a shark. Oh, so that's where it comes from. So it's like a and people were phrase. mad about that. It, it kind of like was like, oh, that's the end of Happy Days. Okay. That's when everyone's like, oh, the show kind of ends. I feel like Buffy didn't have that formally. There's some episodes, but even in the last season, there's great episodes. Yeah. But today, what we're going to be talking about are moments where Drag Race potentially has jumped the shark in different franchises, yes. different seasons. I'm also going to call it like a rage quit. Maybe you quit watching the season. Maybe yes. you, you thought you couldn't come back after that because it was just that bad of a twist or a gag or a moment, yes. whatever it may be. We're going to be talking about the worst moments of all time that either makes you jump the shark or rage quit the show. I'm sure for someone, every single season, there's a rage quit moment. Has a moment, But we're just yes. going to be talking about the most prolific ones. The, right. the ones that everyone thinks of and that comes to mind. There are some that like, do really make you quit it. So oh yeah, like, some of these I really did quit. And yeah. some of these, spoiler, the, the show got canceled yeah. after moments. So so that shows, I mean, maybe enough people were that mad that yeah. it wasn't there, worth it I mean, it there's anymore. there's some some validity in a lot of these, yeah. for sure. But before we get started with all that, make sure you go ahead and hit that subscribe button, like the video, and join the Patreon where you can see all kinds of additional content you can't see on YouTube. Yeah. Plus you're helping support the channel. Now you can also Support the channel by tipping on Venmo or Cash App like these fine folks did. Big shout out to Adam K and Lisa W who both tipped me for my pink ranger look. Romano M also did too. He said, call me Tommy, because I was Kimberly. Uh, yes. <laughs> and then Rocco C who called me the April Neal of drag, which is from Teenage, Min oh. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Oh, I love that. She was a reporter. I love that. So there you go. I, I, I'm on board with that. These first couple, there's so many things wrong with the entire season. It's not just right. one moment, but down under season one, Thank God season two was good because there was a lot of rage quit moments in season oh, one. Oh yeah. I would say the the first big one is that Art Simone gets brought back for no damn reason. The two queens of color were the only other people eliminated yet they didn't get brought back and yet she did even though one went after her. Just didn't make any <laughs> sense. Yeah. And then speaking of queens of color, this before the season even started, all the scandals with Scarlett Adams, and then the way it was handled on the show was just piss poor. Yeah. As to where this past season, the stuff with Hannah and Queen Kong felt very natural, very real. Right. And and on top of that, Scarlett stuff was like significantly more extreme. Yeah, and I have to be honest, this one for me was like, rage quit before I even watched it. Cause I honestly, just hearing all the stuff about it and the queens that were gonna be on it with yeah. their past and stuff, I had made the choice that I was just not going to watch this season at all. So I still haven't even seen season one. You're not missing anything. I love season two. And but that's, that's <laughs> what where they're really fortunate is that people that like I'm, you are even willing to do it. Right. I mean, honestly, I probably wouldn't have watched it if it weren't for like you and other people were telling me like, oh, How it's really it was. good season this time. Like yeah. you should watch it. So I was like, okay, I'll give it a chance. I mean, we almost didn't go back to it. Yeah. There was talent there on season one. It's just like nothing was fair. Right. Nothing ever felt fair. Nothing ever felt right. It was just a mess. Yeah. And it definitely started with art popping up that box. And I even, even though I haven't watched it, I could tell just from what I saw on social media and stuff, the favoritism that Art Simone got. I was honestly surprised though, because I had followed Art Simone before, so I was shocked that they didn't do as good, I guess, as... They weren't but. particularly good at the challenges, but Art is so stunning and so good. Right. Like, so beautiful. Yeah. So the looks were always incredible, but yeah, didn't necessarily meet the challenges. Yeah. And other than the fact that she was... Already had her own WoW Presents show, right. there was no reason that she was the one brought back. Yeah. And there was no explanation given other than Rue said, wanted to have you back. 
And she's like she was already a star. She didn't need all. And she's still the most followed from yeah. the entire yeah. <laughs> this season really did make me quit. Me and Scarlett quit forever, and we are not returning to Italy. Yes. Talk about train wrecks. Oh my gosh. Well, first off, they end up doing a double save in episode one and episode three. Like, like that's so weird. That's so early in the competition for a brand new franchise. Yeah. There was no reason. It was just like they just chose to like, do that. Like even on the U.S. like. Season whatever, 15 now. Like, I would never it's, expect them to... Episode 1 or even episode 3. Like, that's way too early. And it's different than doing, like, we're going to do... No one's going home, but we're doing a top two for the lip sync. That's fine. Yeah. But don't do a lip sync for your life and then just choose to say both of them. Especially when it's not warranted. You know? <laughs> yeah. When, like, there's no reason. Some of the winners along the way... Like, for instance, there's a challenge where Divinity wins the Rusical. And they basically give a disclaimer, like, we don't want to just see that you're a good singer and dancer. We want to see most improved. So she won the challenge basically being most improved, which it just was, it was silly because she wasn't the best in the challenge. Yeah, that is weird. There is the whole lip sync to be disqualified. Yeah. Priscilla as what a, a host was just, I, honestly, that's the reason why we're not returning to this franchise. And I have no, because I get kind of frustrated because there's there's folks that will like tag me and stuff about it. Like, oh, mm -hmm. Mira's mad because it's coming back for season two. I'm not mad. I'm just yeah. not going to watch. Right. <laughs> like, I, it just to, it's to the point where I wouldn't watch again. And it's yeah. mainly, in my mind, there's so, there's a lot of things I can get past because we've seen a lot of crazy mm -hmm. stuff on Drag Race. Right. But Priscilla as a host, I just... Uh, and they're keeping her as the host. If she, yes. So if she was not there, I probably would pick it up again. But I can't pick it up again with Priscilla because also every queen except for like one, which I think Electra the winner, has come out against Priscilla. It's weird too whenever it's like the host isn't like an amazing drag queen to begin with. Like, <laughs> girl, she was calling some of the other girls, which they got upset about it. Uh, truck driver, you look like a truck driver. Yeah, and it's like. Girl, you're going to call anyone else a truck driver. <laughs> like, you cannot give critiques if you're not looking better than them. Like, you look busted than any of the yeah. queens in the competition. Yeah. <laughs> the cherry on top for this whole season is the, is the gag that the person who wins didn't win any challenges throughout the season. Yeah, that is so, that still baffles me. So, like, the difference is down under, at least out of the top four, they picked Ketamine, who was, like, the right person to win that right. season. Like, that was a redeeming quality. This yeah. one had no redeeming quality at the end. Yeah. And it was just six episodes, but it was just a disaster. Season two, is it going to be still just six episodes, or is it... I don't know. I know that they announced that it's coming back, and they might have announced a date, but I haven't looked into You're it. You're like, honestly, I'm over that, yeah. Because well, yeah, I don't plan on watching it, so yeah. I'm not going to keep up with it. I feel yeah. And that's just to be real. And a lip sync to be disqualified. Like, how much sense? Who does that? Either you need to be disqualified because you deserve it, or you don't. Yeah, like, that's just really unfair because it's like, that's not being disqualified, then you're just sending home two people for no reason, or sending home one person for no reason. Well, they ended up sending two people home that week because they did the regular lip sync too. Yeah. Because they had done the double saves. It's like, we're at the finale and we still have eight people. Like, ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> now moving on to a franchise that is no longer with us, Drag Race Thailand. And in season one and two, the thing that we always discuss is different from Thailand is there's weeks where the maxi challenge and the runway are two separate challenges. Yeah. So towards the end of season two, Snatch Game is a perfect example. The person who wins Snatch Game goes home that week. Yeah. That How is much sense weird. does that make? And especially like Snatch Game is known it's as so for being such an important yeah. like challenge in the competition as a whole. Not following the rules of Drag Race, yeah. I think more than anything is why this one it, it probably it's like it's hard to be invested and even care. Like right. if the maxi challenge doesn't make any difference. Why wouldn't I just fast forward to the runway? Yeah. Because, like, if the person who wins Snatch Game can go home that very same week. Yeah. Because they didn't like her runway. Uh-huh. And then the people who bombed the Snatch Game, they, they liked the runway. So they weren't in the bottom. Yeah. I just like, don't. Like, what is the point of the I don't like that format because it's, like, to me, then there's no point of the maxi. It almost, like, at times doesn't follow the format of Drag Race so much that it's hard yeah. to include it. Right. You know? Yeah. And I, I think that if they were to bring it back, I would hope that they would just follow they would the, change just that. the standard yeah. rules. Yeah. It's not broke, so don't fix it. <laughs> right. uh, speaking of broke, another one that is no longer with us, allegedly for now, Holland. Yes. Holland season one as well. It's like the right person won, and maybe people didn't go in the right order. And maybe some people stayed along too long. Like, uh -huh. you, you, there's definitely some favoritism there. But season right. two, the favoritism is off the chain. And yeah. they both just happen to be people that, like, the Countess, who did Fred's makeup on season one, got the free pass on the lip sync. Of course, it was somebody, too, that did her makeup before. Like. Right. <laughs> and then somebody who had done a I ton of Fred's that. hair 
made it to the finale after being caught with a cell phone who should have been disqualified, but they got to stay. And they got rid of the one person who had won three challenges, Keta Minaj. The, the favoritism, unexplained, yeah. is like the problem with this franchise. The fact that they didn't get sent home after finding the cell phone, that's crazy to me. You're cheating then. Like, I mean, right. who knows what they could have been looking up. They had this, the cell phone for Snatch Game, for all the comedy challenges. Yeah, I mean, you know, imagine that's a like big all advantage. the references you can look up and learn about. You could yeah. study up on anything and everything. Right. Yeah. And, yeah. It's just an unfair advantage that no one else has. Exactly. And I thought that Fred actually was a great host, but then it would be like these moments in the season. He has the right heart and he's funny, uh -huh. but damn, he just can't when it comes to like his favorites he yeah. can't make the right decision and he i can't make that. those tough decisions yeah i don't like that in the judge like you no. if you're a judge judge fairly you yeah. can't pick favorites even though i do feel like rupaul does that sometimes too but, but not this to this is, extent this is like yeah. at another level for yeah. real for not real. to this extent this at is all. like you clearly see one person lose the lip sync you clearly see one yeah. person's cheating and they call her out right who's never like, done oh, any of that keep her. <laughs> If they ever brought Holland back, I think Fred is so good, but maybe in like a supportive role and have like Envy Peru, who's the one winner host. Yeah. Somebody who can be a little bit more objective. Yeah, if they had, if he wasn't the main judge. Yeah. So we're going to go back in the vault. And the first regular season where you can kind of see, and I feel like I just talked about this last week, but you can kind of see some of the the production wheels in turn is season seven. Yes. With, with the favoritism again for Pearl. Oh, yes. That lip sync against Trixie that the majority, I would say 99% of people would say that, that Trixie won and Pearl lost, but they kept Pearl. I love that you did include this one because to me, I always had this opinion, but I didn't know if other people thought that too. Oh, explore the internet. Because it's like, I mean, I know that, because I felt like a lot of people did love Pearl though. To me, I honestly just felt like they thought that Pearl was gorgeous out of drag too. And clearly producers, or well, someone yeah. had a good eye out for her. She did. It did come out that she was sleeping with one of the producers. Oh. I did not know that. Yeah, so I, that's probably a factor as well. But her, what she delivered throughout the competition didn't warrant her position, in yeah. my opinion. Even just going it's, back to that lip sync, yeah. Trixie won that to me. Oh, yeah. Well, and just in general with this season, you see people like Kasha Davis, like, slightly mess up. Yeah. Yet be judged so harshly. They, I was so mad about how they judged Kasha. I know. And then people like Pearl, you know. And Which honestly, Miss Fame made top six and should have not been. Yeah. Like, and that was her first time in the bottom. This, yet she was yeah. the weakest almost every week. This season, like, you could tell they really wanted, like, a young, they wanted a like, a fashion young queen. fashion queen to win the yes. season. Very evident that that's what they specifically wanted. And they got that with yeah. Violet. But it's like they were trying to push all those people really far. And it's kind of crazy that even when I watched it, I honestly still thought Ginger was going to win. But... <laughs> right. Because it was not a sp super likable top three. Yeah. <laughs> Jumping to an all-star season, one of the twists that worldwide is hated is the jury. Yes. The jury on All-Stars 3 was crazy. What an odd decision. At a pageant, would you really want all the people that you beat in the pageant to then choose who makes it... No. Who's eligible, eligible to win? Like, it just didn't make any logical sense whatsoever. It and no twist. matter what, like, favorites are going to play into that. Like, they're friends. There's so many factors that right. are unrelated to the competition. And, period. yeah, they're probably... I'm sure, like, most of them probably didn't even judge it at all, like, on the actual competition. Like, they were just right. like, well, cause I'm the, mad at her. Or, you the know? two people that got the most votes, Kennedy and Trixie, yeah. were, had the weakest track record. Yeah. Kennedy had one win, yet... Kennedy had the most votes. Right. They did try to make it seem like it was, you know, about speeches. BB didn't give a very heartfelt speech. Trixie gave like a shady speech. Yeah. And then Kennedy and Shangela gave really heartfelt speeches. Yeah. So it's but like, they, even based on that, they didn't, the girls didn't vote the same across yes, the board. Yes, exactly. It was very, cause Shangela had the least amount of votes yet was clearly the strongest player. Right. This is one of those twists they did just to have a twist. And maybe they didn't think that they wouldn't pick the rightful top two or like i don't know what they thought but <laughs> they, it's almost like they just didn't want to make the decision on their own let's say that you went to a job interview and you beat all these people and you got the job and then they come back to determine your race yeah you know <laughs> like it doesn't make any sense no not at all the very next all-star season one of the most controversial decisions ever is the twinners on all-stars four they really were having some controversial all-stars like yeah <laughs> I think that's why All Stars Five they didn't have any comeback. Anything like, and it was very like it was like when Alaska won, Shay won, and that was yeah. predictable. It was yeah, very predictable. This was not super predictable because oh, no. from what I understand, like for the longest time they used to film double wins and all yes. of that, 
and they clearly didn't film one here. They did a split screen and right. Rue doing ADR into the episode, you know. <laughs> they had poor Monet and Trinity watching this yes. live. That was the mo that's the most awkward part about it is like when you watch that clip cuz it's like you could tell they had no idea and yeah. like that they were both kind of thinking like what the hell like <laughs> Yeah. Monet was good about like keeping a smile on her face regardless Trinity of what she was Trinity was feeling. not. <laughs> Trinity was confused. Hurt. I mean, just that picture that you put, like... That's from that, yeah. Like, she was... That's them watching the double win, and she is so confused. Yeah. And, like, looks upset the whole time. Half the time, she has her hand over her mouth, too. Yeah. It just, you know, it was one of those things where it just felt like, can't you just make the decision? Looking back, it's, like, hard, because it's, like, I do see them both as winners. Yeah, So it's absolutely. really hard. At, at but... this point, at this point, for something like this, honestly, with all of this, all of it, really, because, like, what's it matter now? Right. It, it goes down in the history books as being something. Right. But it's almost like... They won't make that mistake again. Yeah, you know? I'm sure they will not do because a double win again like that. Because that's the thing is when you're changing the rules, especially for All-Stars, that was two years in a row where they did crazy stunts at the end. Right. Manila was really the moment that a lot of people probably rage quit, but that was the that's rules. That's true. Like yeah. she was up for elimination that week and someone made a bold decision. And to me, I wasn't that mad about that because as I was sad that Manila was leaving, but again, she was playing by the rules. So I was like, okay. <laughs> yeah, I this season in general, out of all the All-Star seasons, has some of the most questionable like tops and bottoms every week too yeah you have the all-star three thing then you have the manila and this in that same season you're lucky that people come back it is There's, true you know like, like that the queens would even want to do it again or the like, queens would want to come back or that the audience is still interested yeah you know you're taking that risk and if you keep doing that over and over that's when people right people leave i'm I, I think you're right though about how that that's why the next season they played it so safe that they yeah they didn't want any of that because that's the only All Star season besides All Stars one which was yeah. teams that they have no comeback episode at all right now looking back talking it out it makes sense yeah like it yeah. makes sense like they need to get back to basics yeah the judges on Canada season one oh yeah. All three of them weren't particularly that pleasant. Yeah. But Brooklyn and Jeffrey were the worst. Yeah, it was hard. It was Ugh. like you kind of liked Stacy, but the other two yeah. were like, "Ugh, I can't even watch this." Well, then Stacy kind of phased out towards the end of the season. Yeah. Jeffrey and Jeffrey's done interviews about it now, saying that he was asked to play like a role, like to play the mean judge, and so yeah. that uh, thank God because that it makes, makes so much more sense. Yeah. It really does. But man, he was unlikable and the critiques he gave were just mean. If they hadn't changed up the judging, I probably would have rage quit this because I don't know. Season one of Canada was actually really huge. Like in terms of, at least for our channel was yeah. huge. But we've had a lot of the same folks that watch season one not come back for two or three, even though three was like finally like that right stride. It was really good. Yeah, people still are like, no, I still remember season one. So it that's that, that's that thing. That's that risk you take of right. not having people be able to get that taste out of their mouth. And I, it sucks for Jeffrey that yeah. now I think everyone kind of has so. that stink about him, even though, like he said, he was playing the role they wanted yeah. him to. But at least he's come back a few times on the US one, so... And been it, his normal self. Yeah, so like, it pushes some of that further away. There were moments that it was hard to watch. It was like, that was just mean and uncalled for. And it sucks because the cast was so good. Right. The challenges and the, the cast and everything is so good, but you can't go back and do a marathon of this because every episode ends with them doing that bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> like, every episode ends so negatively. And a lot of times you would just, I would harshly disagree with their opinions. Yeah. So it was, like, hard to watch. Up next is the Pork Chop Lounge on season 13. What I do appreciate about Drag Race, I'll say, especially the US one, they're good about keeping it fresh, right? Yes. And sometimes when you're trying to keep it fresh, mm -hmm. you make mistakes. Right. And I think that's what this was. This yes. was one of the biggest mistakes. They come in in the workroom at two at a time. Right. They don't get to interact with every, everyone else, which is one of the things we love is seeing all the girls interact. Uh huh. And then they have to go to the stage immediately and lip sync against each other. Yeah. Half half the girls win and half have to go to a pork chop loading dock where they were told you've gotten the pork chop. Yeah. So a lot of them think that they're out. Immediately. Right. I know. I just thought that was so weird. I felt bad for the queens that had to go home so early like that. I don't know. Like, I guess that would have happened anyway. Someone would have gone home. Well, they but... didn't really go home, actually, because even Elliot, who got the final. Right. So then the pork chop girls all vote. They vote Elliot. And then all that happens to Elliot is they go into the winning group. But then it was like they were sent to the pork chop lounge. They were just sitting there waiting forever. I for nothing. Know. Yeah, I don't know. So we had to just sit there and what, instead of seeing them all interact in the workroom for the first time and yeah. talk and. And Which see is how they such behave. a fun part of the first episode. It is. Instead of seeing that, we see these girls all just sit and sulk. 
Yeah, like it's yeah. It was it was sad because then you're sitting there feeling bad for all of them, like oh they already are going home. But it made it so that it was one of the seasons where it was hardest to warm up to the girls because yeah. of how they were introduced, right? And which I think kind of backfired for them because oh, like, yeah. it seemed like they were trying to do that to give more of an opportunity to kind of get to know everybody, but it, it did didn't. not come across that it way. It wasn't that at all. It well, did because the then it's like their dream just came true, but they're all getting their dreams ripped away from them. Like, yeah. I don't know. It was Even though sad. they actually didn't. They, yeah, they didn't they, really, but... They were depressed. That's what like, they thought. Yeah. They came to Drag Race and were depressed immediately. Yeah. <laughs> and then the final one that we're going to look at is season 14, which is half the episodes, no one goes home. Yes. So the twist this time around was the golden chocolate bar, which is fine. I don't mind a twist like that, right? Yeah, I didn't mind the chocolate bar twist. And I don't mind no one going home like the first two episodes. That's cute too. I'm okay with that. Yeah. But then there's so many other episodes where no yes. one goes. Out of the 14 competitive episodes, only seven of those episodes does anyone go home. Yeah, that's crazy to me. Because no one goes half the time. It makes it feel like the competition isn't as, like, fierce. Right. You know? I liked the beginning. I do like, you know, then you get to know them more in the beginning. Don't yeah. send anybody home right away. But then it's like, okay, the competition's moving. Let's get it going. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. <laughs> And by the time the Golden Chocolate Bar twist came, we'd already had six episodes where no one went home. And six. it felt so, that Chocolate Bar, I was surprised it went on so long. I kept thinking, like, it was going to be one of the first episodes or, you know. Right, because by the time I got here, we didn't want it because no one had gone home the whole damn Yeah, season. It, it just felt silly. It was. Because no one went at Snatch Game because they didn't do lip syncs that right. day. You know, it, they, did, they did a lot of stunts where it was just one too many... Stunts. Saves, yes. You know, where you have to still make it feel competitive. I agree. I do think that out of probably almost all the ones we looked at, that one's not as bad. But yeah. the thing is, like we talked about 13 with the Pork Chop Lounge and how that played out. And there's still a lot of episodes in that season where no one goes. Mm -hmm. And then the next season, there's even more episodes where no one goes. Right. Those kind of things is when people start to tune out. So yeah. Like they add up and it's like, okay, now I've hit my breaking point. I'm done. It makes you wonder for next season if they'll switch it up again. And and if they do, yeah, they've got to come up with a way that it doesn't feel so forced or yeah. like... It still feels competitive. It still feels right. exciting. Because I want more time with the queens, like yeah. to where we really get to know them better. Yeah. But I don't want it to be so long of a season where it's like, was anybody going to go home? Like, right, Because right. that's how it felt some episodes. It was like, well, they could have gone home. They obviously have to fill a certain amount of episodes. One, I think they should have at least one more queen. You know, like, yeah. right. More queens, more episodes. Agreed. But I would prefer if they did like um, those early episodes, no one goes. Yes, you know, so that I we agree. do get to know everyone. So maybe say like the first three or four, no one goes. Yes. But then after that, then we're kicking Competition's in Competition's kicked in. And once it's kicked in, you can have one episode where no one goes. But after that, it needs to, like, you know, like. Yes, very much that. There can be one double save or one chocolate bar twist or something, but not more than that. Because they had a double save. They had a lip sync halfway through where it was just a lip sync for the win and no one went. Yes. They had the chocolate bar twist. Yes. It's Snatch Game where no one went. I mean, it's literally crazy. There's literally seven episodes yeah. where no one went home. So yeah. that's our list today. Let us know if there's any that speak to you here specifically, or if there's any that we missed, leave those in the comments below. Chloe, thank you so much for being here today. Yes, thanks for having me. And I have one last thing to say. Glad you got to see me. Ooh. And actually, let me see if I can do this, because she always did this thing. Nope. Yes. <laughs> I think you could do it. <laughs> let me try one more time. It's like the Disney Channel thing. <laughs> ah, you did it! All right. <laughs>